Okay, so um, here are some of the materials that I'm gonna talk about um, before I get into the um, anatomy of the shears. This is your standard um, clip, or what they would call butterfly clip. The duckbill clips I don't have on hand now. Um, I don't prefer those, I actually like these. The duckbill clips are a lot thinner, they're usually metal. By the way, it's okay to use metal clips for hair cutting, but when it comes to chemical services, they're a no-no because they can react. A lot of clips you're gonna get are gonna be plastic um, and not metal for that reason. This is an example of a barbering comb. See how it's uh, tapered? This end, you can get very close to the scalp when you're cutting. This is an example of the thinning shears. See the teeth in there? These are the ones that I've gotten from school. You got a blade here and some teeth there. Here's the shears I got from school. They're, these are casted shears. They are not forged ones. They are of a lower quality, but they're good for the basic beginner. Here's an example of one of my favorite go-to shears, and it is the Samvia shear. This is a forged shear made with high-quality steel. Here's an example of an eraser with a guard. These are the ones that you're commonly getting in your cosmetology kit. Has a titanium edge here, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Has a tang right there for my finger to rest. This is not a tail comb you're gonna use for cutting because I have a lot of students make this mistake. This is a tail comb for foiling or what they call foiling comb. This is a tail comb for styling. Your tail comb will look like this but have uniform um, bristles and you can use this to section. Most combs, and I don't have one on uh, right now, that you get that are one length and have a little um, edge, you can use that to actually grasp the hair in section. So that just talks about your um, tools so you know the anatomy or so it prepares you to learn the anatomy of a shear. When you're working with a shear, you have the cutting edge. Let me get my Samvia shear out. Your cutting edge is right here. The finger tang is right here for resting your finger. And the pivot adjustment area is going to be right here. That's where you turn it. They have a bumper. The bumper right here prevents this from clamming on each other. So it acts as a, um, almost like a door stopper. And the thumb hole, which is right here where your thumb goes. And then there's the ring finger hole for your ring finger. So the cutting edge is gonna be defined as the part of the blade that actually does the cutting. The pivot and the adjustment area are parts that make your shears cut. Your hand only directs where the shear travels. Your adjustment knob, when tightened, pulls the blades together at just the correct tension so the hair does not fall or slide between the blades. And it also allows the hair to rest on top of the blades so that when they are closed, the hair is cut to the desired length. Okay, so your finger tang gives your pinky an additional contact point so the nerves and tendons in your pinky and hand are less stressed and pressure is relieved, allowing you to relax your grip so you can hold the shear more comfortably. This also will help to prevent um, a carpal tunnel or some finger issues because as hairdressers, if you don't cut the correct way, you can actually wear wrist out very quickly. You'll see a lot of hairdressers that are in their, that are in their 70s and 80s who've been doing it for a while. Like we always recommend cutting palm to palm. They didn't do that back in the day and what happened is their whole hands are suffering now from carpal tunnel and arthritis. The ring finger holds where you put your ring finger. Do not use your mingle, middle finger when cutting. Only your ring finger should be placed there for obvious reasons. Um, if I were to try to do that, it would be very awkward for me to cut like this and it would feel it right here in my wrist. So there's all about ergonomics when you're doing this. The thumb hole um, is the bottom hole and should only go slightly over the cuticle. So you don't want to stick your whole hum thumb through it. Otherwise it will be, see how mine goes slightly below the cuticle. If it was all the way in, that would be very uncomfortable to cut with. Okay, so shear maintenance. Um, a lot of this is common sense. You want to keep your products clean. You want to make sure that you're not um, stressing the shears out, using a lot of, you're not overturning the tension. So clean this with a soft towel, rinse off any hair. I don't recommend putting your shears in barbicide because that can ruin the metal. You want to remove any debris physically and then use proper lubrication. Proper lubrication will extend the life and get rid of tension. It also prevents any rust from forming. Um, if you own a swivel shear, lubricate the swivel joints as needed. So daily tension adjustment and balancing, um, this is gonna help with, um, if you're cutting hair, eventually the tension will become looser over time, so you have to readjust the knob. You wanna make sure uh, you get um, 
the tension just right. I don't always do mine daily. Some styles will tell you they don't do theirs daily either. It really depends on your preference and what you're feeling and the quality of your shears. If the tension is too loose, it will allow your shears to fold the hair. If it is too tight, it will cause the shears to bind and cause unnecessary wear and fatigue. To test the tension, hold the shears with the adjustment knob facing you and your thumb handle in your left hand. With the shear perfectly straight and the blades pointed to the far left for a right-handed shear or f to the right for a left-handed shear. Let me, let me read this again. This is worded weird. And the blades pointed to the left for a right-handed shear or to the right for a left-handed shear. Lift up on the ring finger to open the blade halfway, then let the ring finger handle go. The blade should close two-thirds of the way or at the end of the shear, you should have about a one to two inch gap at the tips. If your shears need to be adjusted, you can tighten tension by turning the adjustment knobs to the right. You can loosen the tension by turning the adjustment knob to the left. Also read the Did You Know box because titanium is always used um, in marketing and the marketing isn't always true. This is titanium right here. All it means is the color. You can have pink titanium, purple ones, rainbow colored ones. The only difference between titanium shear and other shear is color. Titanium is simply the finish that has been applied to the surface of steel to change the appearance. There have been claims that titanium makes the shear better, sharper, stronger, or harder, but it actually has no bearing to the benefit of the shear except to coat and color. So they give you um, other, su other suggestions such as weekly cleaning lubrication, once a week carefully open shears to a 90 degree angle, loosen the adjustment knob enough so the blades allow a paper towel to fit between the pivot and then push out any hair particles or debris. Be careful not to over loosen the adjustment knob or your shears can fall apart. And that's why I recommend you actually don't do this, that you just do standard cleaning because a lot of shears will clean easily. After the area between the blades is cleaned, put one or two drops of high quality scissor oil in the space between the blades. This removes dirt and debris from between the blades. Be careful not to put scissor oil directly under the adjustment knobs because over lubrication may cause a loss of blade tension resulting in folding and bending of the hair when cutting. They recommend disinfecting your shears after each client by first thoroughly cleaning the shears with soap and water and then completely immersing them in an EPA registered disinfectant spray. Um, majority of the time soap and water is good. You can do this if you want to, but just my own word of professional caution. Soaking your shears in barbicide, especially for too long, will ruin the metal. You want to thoroughly dry the shears, um, but you don't want to take the shears apart to loosen. You must lubricate your blades after disinfecting them because oil will be removed from the blades during this process. Sharpening the shears, you should only sharpen them as needed. You don't want to fall in the habit of automatically having them sharpened on a three to six month cycle whenever a sharpening technician comes to the salon. The reason being is that sometimes you might have more haircuts and they need to be sharpened frequently. Other times may not have enough haircuts and the blades are still fine. An example of what's going on now, how a lot of salons are closed and um, you're not going to be doing haircuts. So if you had an appointment to get them sharpened, you can get a whole other month or a few months out of them. Obviously the better you care for them, um, the, the more longer they last and the less they break down or have issues. On average, you should be able to go one year or longer between sharpening if you follow the oiling and adjustment um, directions. You, When you do need to have your shears sharpened, it's best to have a factory certified technician sharpen your shears or send them to the manufacturer. I would recommend going to the manufacturer. So my Samvia shears, I'm sending them to Samvia because they guarantee that they're correct. If they mess up, they give me shears back for free. If I send them to, let's say, some kind of knife salesman who's selling knives and say, oh, I can sharpen your shears just like a knife. Don't buy into that because if that knife salesman ruins up my shears, I don't get compensation for that. So now we're going to talk about left-handed versus right-handed shears. There is a difference because you're going to pay um, a different price for them. Simply taking a right-handed shear, turning it over does not make it appropriate for a left-handed cutter because the blades of the shear need to be reversed. You always want to use the correct shear for your hand. I'm ambidextrous, but I use right-handed because it's cheaper and it's easier. Know that shears with shorter blades are great for point cutting and cutting hair close to the head like around the ears. Shears with longer blades are great for cutting long straight lines into the hair like for blunt cuts. You can also order shears that come in a various amount of lengths. There's a five and a half inch, there's a six inch, there's a seven inch, and so on and so forth. Um, when you purchase the shears, you will purchase shears several times throughout your career um, and they require uh, in, an informed decision. Keep in mind that buying a high quality shears is an investment in your career. Here are some things to look out for and shears are considering. You want to know how the shear was manufactured, cast versus forged, 
where you're getting the steel from, ask about the steer's quality, decide on the right blade edge, decide on the best handle design for you. Be sure the shear fits properly, hold the shear in your hands, get to feel it. If you're at a trade show booth, you wanna be able to feel it, test their product out. Swivel thumb shears. Um, ask about the service agreement, ask about warranty, analyze the cost of the shears, determine how many pairs of shears you need. Sometimes you might need a shear for doing um, longer hair, other times you need a shorter one. So chances are you're gonna build a portfolio. If you're buying from one seller, um, and one company, they normally have it online that over time can invest in them so you're, everything's consistent or you may get an expensive brand or cheap brand and mix and match. So it really is a personal preference. Um, but on the steel quality, I'm gonna go back and give you some you know tips from the book. We know that Rockwell hardness is how the measure the quality. You want at least a 440A steel or higher. As you go up the scale from a 440A to 440 steel, see, the steel gets harder, which means the edges will last longer. You wanna decide on the right blade edge. A full con convex edge will give you the smoothest cut and the sharpest edge possible. Remember convex is pointing out. If you have a sharper pointier edge, that's gonna give you a sharp cut and a better cut. Decide on the right quality edge. Um, that is under there. Decide on the best handle for you. Shears will have three types of handle grips that you will need to decide on which one is best. Shears with an opposing grip force, the thumb underneath the ring finger can create stress and pressure on the nerves and tendons of the hand. An offset grip moves the thumb forward so the resting is below the right and the middle finger. And a full offset or crane grip is the most anatomically correct handle design because the position is the thumb grip under the index finger, which is how you want your hand when relaxed. The position is released, releases pressure and stress put on the nerves and tendons of the thumb. Um, so the opposing grip, is gonna be on top of one another, the offset grip and the crane grip, which is this. Crane grip is right here where you have more space. It's also referred to as an ergonomic design or an ergonomic design grip. That's how they market that. Um, be sure the shears fit properly. You wanna make sure your finger's going correctly and it feels good. If it feels too tight, you have to get an adjustment. Some of them give you different rings to fit. Ask these simple questions and purchasing a new pair of Ask yourself these questions in making a purchase. Do these shears fit me correctly and do they feel comfortable? Do these shears feel too loose or too big? Do I feel like I have complete control of these shears? Do these shears come with a set of ring guards and custom fit the shears to my exact ring finger and thumb finger? You also wanna make sure that they, when you hold the shears, that they feel good, you're able to get good results of moving it. If it feels odd to you, typically that's a sign that you don't wanna purchase that shear. And the swivel shear provides great comfort and control. The shivel, swivel shear allows you to lower your shoulder and elbow and straighten the wrist while cutting for the more relaxed posture. That's gonna help not only your shears last, but it helps your hand last. And ask about the service agreement. Um, when you, and that's good business skills. A service agreement will maybe include something or it'll give you warranty for one year. So if your shear breaks, they'll recover it for a full cost. Typically that's more of a good thing when a company offers better agreements. If a company was gonna charge you you know, $1,000 and say, uh, but we don't offer sharpening, we don't offer any repairs, or we don't offer any warranty, then you're gonna wanna ask, why am I paying this much? And that may determine that, oh, I really don't wanna go with this brand. Maybe I'll pay that same thousand and get a good quality cheer, but also get some benefits with that. So you wanna ask about warranty um, because warranty is very important. Should it break or should you have someone come into the salon and accidentally break them? It's not on you, the company will pick it up for you because you invested in them. Um, analyze the cost of the shears. Um, typically for a new cosmetologist, the cost should be between 250 and 300. If you're buying a cashier, you should not pay more than 200. If the price of a cashier is higher than 200, keep looking. Um, determine how many pairs you need. You're gonna wanna have two cutting shears, one thinning or blending shear available at all times. Um, your second shear is necessary if anything happens to your main cutting shear. So here's a really good chart. It talks about the types of textured shears because you can choose for so many. Your chunking shear has five to nine teeth and it's great for working out big sections. The wider the space between the blades, the more pronounced the cutting will be. Your texturizing shears, which are gonna be 14 to 19 teeth, add increased blending, they can blend lines. Your thinning shear, which is 26 to 30 teeth, will are the most universally used. They consist of reduction of bulk. Closer together the teeth, the more blended the cut. And your blending shear, 38 to 50 teeth, are great for scissor overcomb cutting. You can actually cut with your blending shear. 
Also know that every type of shear has a distinct design and reason for its size, shape, and length. For example, when starting out, you may want to use a 28 tooth thinning shear or a 40 tooth blending shear. These are both safe starting shears for the new cutter because they render less dramatic cuts and are appropriate for many types of haircuts. Note that the correct way to measure the length of the shear is to start at the tip of the blades and measure to where the finger tang rests. So it'll be a measurement from here to all the way here. And this would be about seven and a half inches. So know that custom fitted shears are important. Um, over the course of your career, you're likely to perform thousands of haircuts. Um, for this reason, you want the shears to be properly fitted to your hands. When you use correct ergonomics, it prevents carpal tunnel. So long-term repetitive motion injuries, such as carpal tunnel syndrome and other muscular skeletal disorders can occur, and that can be an issue because it can impact your career. You're able to cut less. It'll impact your money and your income. Also know that the price of the shear you pay may also be reflected in your prices. If you're able to charge more services, you will raise the prices because you're trying to pay off the shears typically. So there's all kinds of different prices that you can do in business, and that's something you have to consider for yourself in the salon you work at. Some salons work on a tier system where you have a limit to how much you can charge, and as you move up the tier, you're able to charge more, such as like stylist one, two, and three, or they'll say um, junior stylist, senior stylist, that kind of thing. Um, so we've discussed why it's important to use them ergonomically. You want the grip to be relaxed. You don't want it to have a heavy pressure on nerves and tendons because that can cause nerve damage um, in the wrist, shoulder, and neck, and even your back, actually, if you're cutting at a certain angle. Allow this year to do the cutting work and properly adjust it. You want to get in the habit of only cutting with your thumb. You don't want to be going like that. So if I'm cutting, I'm only going to go like that. That's something you should practice while you're in front of the TV. Practice um, palming your shears. So when you palm your shears, I'm cutting like this. I'm gonna palm, then I'll have my comb. Comb out the hair, cut. Palm my shears, comb. Things like that are very important. You don't wanna put your shears down, pick them back up, because that wastes time and time is money. Also know you should never lend your shears to another stylist. Everyone cuts in a different motion. Allowing someone else, someone who has a different level of pressure than you, can um, cause the blades to wear out or they may adjust it and it may not fit right, right to you. It's almost like I give the example of lending someone your car. Um, if you give someone your car, they're gonna adjust the seat in the mirrors. You can't drive that car then because the mirror might be too far and get in a car crash. That's the same thing when you lend your shears, so lend them carefully if you're gonna lend them out. Just be aware of that. So you want to be able to fit your shear correctly, um, fitting to the ring finger. A properly um, fitted ring finger hole rests between the finger and the second knuckle, far enough back on the ring finger so that your pinky is resting comfortably on the finger tang. Once you have the shear in that position, there should be only a slight bit of extra space around your finger and the finger hole. A properly fit ring finger will be centered in the middle of your ring finger hole. Fitting a thumb, when your shear is properly fitted, the thumb hole will rest slightly over the cuticle area of your thumb, but will not, not up to or over the knuckle. Once you have the shear at that location of your thumb, there can be a little extra space around your thumb and the thumb hole. A proper fit will have your cuticle centered underneath the center of the thumb ring guard. Relaxing your grip. A relaxed grip allows you to cut without any thumb pressure so the blades are not being forced together. It reduces the amount of pressure on the nerves and tendons in your hand, which can result in damage, and it allows the shear to do the work of cutting. Correct finger position alignment. Correct nerve and tendon alignment when cutting the hair is crucial to having healthy having a healthy hair career as a professional cosmetologist. Correct finger position allows your finger to stay properly aligned, which not only gives you correct nerve and tendon alignment in your hand, but also reduces the likelihood of developing hand health issues caused by improperly fitted shears. Look at the handle design that cradles your middle finger. This guarantees correct finger placement in your shears. So you want your hand to be aligned like this. They have a finger rest right here. That is what it means. If you see my thumb is not all the way, it's not over my knuckle, this rests nicely, my pinky rests comfortably. That's a proper alignment.
So when you're holding your tools, there's important reasons to hold your tools properly. A proper hold gives you the most control and the best result when cutting hair. A proper hold helps you avoid muscle strain in your hands, arms, neck, and back. So um, when you hold your shears, you want to hold them just like this and get in the habit of palming them. Concentrate on only moving your thumb like I mentioned before. So what I'm going to do is we're going to break here and then we're going to talk about holding the shears and comb, holding the razor, um, handling the comb, tension, body position, and some safety in haircutting. And if we have time, we're going to get into um, specific haircuts.